Right, let's talk a little bit about the render on the outside of the house in this project. Now, this house was a standard brick veneer house, uh, like many of the volume built homes are. Um, we have made a decision to not touch the brick um, for many reasons, but you may as well almost pull down the house. We're going to pull all the brick away as well. So we have left the brick veneer, but we really wanted to render the outside. Now, render typically is a cement render, which is a completely non-breathable plastic coating, basically, um, which is very good for sealing the um, outside of the house and protection. But as you're probably aware, the more footage you watch, as building biologists, we regard the building as your third skin with your clothes being the second and it needs to be breathable. Uh, problems happen when things are not breathable. So we do not want to use cement render on the entire house. We will be using it down in the plinth where we do want to create a sealant, um, but certainly not anywhere else. Now people often ask me, what is my favorite part of this house? What are the things I love the most? And I've got to say, if we name a top three uh, things, the render has got to rank up there as in the top three for sure. I absolutely love the external render uh, and the finish we created. We did this for a number of reasons. One, to protect the building, um, offers wonderful protection to the building. Uh, secondly, because we have chosen to use a limestone, a lime-based render. I keep saying limestone because it's literally turning back to limestone, this beautiful lime render. Literally in this lime render we have, we have lime, uh, we have sand, and we have graphene, uh, a natural, natural product that basically gives the flexibility to the render so that we don't get cracking and so on. Um, we have used a product called graphene stone, um, which is originally from Spain. Um, wonderful, wonderful product. I've been incredibly happy with it. Um, we chose not to use the graphene stone paints on the inside. We had some problems there, but certainly on the outside, the, the render is, is wonderful. Um, and we used uh, Mark, Mark Simmons from the Venetian Plaster Company. Um, he's based up in, in Queensland, or was now at this time of filming in 2021. And he came down and, and stayed down here for, for six weeks to render this entire house. Um, an amazing, amazing job um, and incredibly happy with Mark. Um, so there are many interviews with him. So in this particular segment, there's just going to be a lot of interviews, one following another. Well, I've literally been on site with him and literally just said, right, stop. Let me ask you about what you're doing here now. Let's ask about this next stage and this next step. So instead of me just sitting here and rambling on and showing a whole bunch of photos, this segment's going to be a number of different pieces of footage that you can just watch one after the other as you see this rendering drop progress. But I just wanted to give a little bit of a background as to what happened here and why and how. So um, yeah, we'll, I'm gonna run you through some photographs though. Um, to just give you an idea of the prep and then you'll watch all of the videos afterwards. So if we look at this first photograph, you'll see here that this is one of the areas where we had a big problem at the front of the house. Um, really big problem with this area that we actually dug out a lot of soil to drop that soil level below floor level where it was a real problem before the soil came up high, kind of came up to above where the floor level is, where you see that white, the white markings around the wall, we've had to dig that amount of soil out. So we are going to seal that by creating, <clears throat> by using cement render on the plinth, which is that lower area below the floor level. And you can see, you can see the wings, what he calls the wings. When I say he, Mark, the renderer, calls the wings on the corners. Um, so we've got plastic white corners there to protect and strengthen the corners when he renders. And then you've got that netting, that sort of those green wings uh, on the side. Um, Mark did an enormous amount of prep work. I mean, there was a lot more time spent on prep work than there wasn't actually rendering the whole house. The rendering is actually the quick part. Prepping and putting up all of these corners on every corner and edge and so on, it took an incredible amount of time. So 
that's just what we're trying to show you in some of these photographs and that's that photograph over there. The next photograph you can see the same area from a different angle just showing you the amount of prep work where we're putting the white stop beads at the bottom and the white and along all the corners and you can see on every corner and every bottom or top of the plinth everywhere down the bottom so that we can segregate the the bottom cement render from the top lime render uh, you've got that break um, and there's a lot of clearing of the area so wherever there are plants and stones and pavers and everything we need to pull everything back and you'll see how much we've dug down when i say we i actually did the digging on this project i literally dug around the entire house um, we're actually putting uh, where you can see that trench we've put a lot of drainage there because that's created a big problem there'll be drainage pipes going in there that's why we've dug it down certainly not creating a well for water but around the entire house we're digging um i'm digging um and uh yeah that was quite a job let me tell you you can see more of my job on this next photograph where again you can see the corners but again you can see how I've dug down to get to the waterproof membrane so you can see the concrete slab just below the bricks there and we're going all the way down to the waterproof membrane because we want to seal that and actually get the waterproof membrane and fold it upwards um, and we want to then get the land and slope it away from the building all the water must go away from the building that was the biggest reason for doing this so we've dug it all back, then we'll actually build it up against the wall to slope it back down away from the wall. But I've just taken these photographs so you can see the enormous amount of work that I did uh, in digging around the house. There's down the one, other one side of the house, digging all the way along there. And also digging it out so that Mark can render, cement render, and therefore seal the bottom plinth below the floor level. And then we will put the soil back and slope it away from the building but in order for him to get in there we need to dig away from all of those foundations so that he has access to it so you can see down the one side all along that down that side that's what we did and interestingly enough here you can also see there's different bricks uh, below the window that's where a bricky came in and actually bricked up all below the window because when we removed the original floor to ceiling windows um, we specifically didn't want the, the windows to go all the way down to the floor for two reasons. Firstly, because you need to um, have toughened glass um, if you're going all the way down to the floor, which is a bigger expense. Um, if you're 50 mil off the floor, then you don't need toughened glass from there up. So we brought everything that much up, so we didn't need to use toughened glass. And the other reason is really cold down the bottom. So the higher you lift your weak point, which is your glazing off the ground, the less hard it has to work, so to speak, because it's not as cold and you've got a wall, which will always be much better insulated than glazing itself. So those were a couple of reasons why we actually infilled um, where there was glazing, we infilled with brick and created a wall. It's just not necessary to go all the way down to the ground. A lot of volume built homes often did go down to the ground because everyone loves windows and they love to see lots of windows. Makes it incredibly inefficient because it's cheap glazing, but makes it incredibly inefficient when the glazing's all down to the ground. So that's the reason for that. Um, then here you'll see wherever there are joins, um, we've put in this reinforcing that's a mesh, the metal mesh that Mark puts in, more prep work, just to reinforce that we don't get cracking there. So because there's a join, if there's one new brickwork and you can see the old brickwork right next to it because those are two different basically times at which brand new bricks gone in and old bricks there there will be totally different movements so in order to avoid cracking uh, that's reinforced with just a piece of mesh there as you can see so that's the reason for that and was put in in quite a number of areas to try and prevent cracking um, there you can see it in more detail the mesh running from right from the top right down to the bottom where there's new brickwork and old brickwork and you'll see there in particular that's happened because there was um, a, a window next to this door um, in the old scenario and there was just no need for a window to be there so it was all bricked up 
So we just have one door to the laundry, that's what that is, and not a window next to it because that window is completely unnecessary. So, and in a laundry where you often have the dryer and you have warm air and you have cold air outside, there's a much higher risk of condensation taking place. So you don't want a ton of glass in the laundry. So that's another reason for seeing all that new brickwork. There you can just see again, just under the window, the same thing as what I explained where the new brickwork goes and how we reinforce it to avoid cracking with a little mesh. There's a nice detail of the, the corner and the stop beads where basically you can see now the plinth being rendered with a standard cement render that Mark actually made up himself so that he could put a, an extra water sealant in there as well. Um, so that's creating a great sealant um, below from the floor level down outside. So when we get tons of rain, we've got so much nice sealant on there. We're also, once that dried, we painted on there. And again, the paint is a sealant as well. So we painted on there to match the roof and the downpipes and so on, same color. Um, so it all matches up, but again, another sealant. And then on top of that, we'll slope all the land away from the building. <coughs> Excuse me, so you won't have the little well right up against the building. We will build that soil level up and actually build it higher and bring it down to slope away from the building. Always going on about sloping away from the building, but it is one of the most important aspects today. There you can see a lot better and you can see how when things slope towards the building, like this photograph shows, which we've done just to, just to give Mark access so that he can get in there and render, you can see how it will rain and everything slopes towards the building and, and your concrete slab being a big sponge will just absorb all this water. So once he's rendered, once it's all sealed up, we actually slope things in completely the opposite direction to what you're seeing. On this next photograph, it actually shows the whole area under which we're going to, on top of which we're going to place a deck. So a lot of soil was pulled out of this area because things sloped dramatically towards the building. Um, and you can see nicely the concrete slab there and the brickwork starting above it. And you can see where the floor level is by the white markings and the stop bead there. And you can see where Mark is then going to render everything below that white line in the sealant cement render. And once he's done all that, then we'll start sloping things away from the building. And here we're going to put geofabric and so on. So in the decking footage, you can see the degree to which we prepare the area below the deck so that we get water to drain away under the deck. But this is just showing all the, all the prep work and you can see the styrene window reveals that are held together with the black Sega tapes as well. That created quite a challenge for Mark to render. Not easy to render with those kind of reveals there. But that shows the other aspect of the building. Um, before everything's rendered, you can see new brickwork mixed with old brickwork. Um, you can see the corners. Um, you can see the amount of prep work that gets done right around the entire property. So the new roof is on, but now we're rendering. And there's a, a good photo of also the Gutex. Uh, insulation um, boards that are put above every window so we don't have the cement sheeting anymore and it's now flush with the brickwork so mark it's rendered white it's already rendered finished and he will render over that so it will seem seamless um, now you can see the big gutex boards above the glazing but once he's rendered you won't see that at all um, you'll think it's all just brick um, above but it'll be very well insulated with the Gutex. On this next photo, you can then see how deep we had to go there. You can actually see how the, um, this is actually the garage wall, this big, big wall section. And you can actually see how the concrete slab is pretty damp there uh, and how everything slopes towards that garage wall. So you can see how deep that was a big day of digging, big few days of digging just around that area. Um, so the mark has full access and that he can then, um, we are also allowed to try and dry uh, the bricks as much as possible. And then he goes in and he will start applying the sealant um, and rendering. When we say the sealant, the cement render with sealant in it. And there you can see how he's now done some work in the bottom plinth. And you can see the corners 
and the downpipes, how we had to take all the downpipes, move them away from the house. We didn't want to put in temporary plastic sleeves on the downpipes because they're fairly useless um, and blow around in the wind and put water all over the place. So we literally turned our downpipes around the other way and they managed to fit in so that we could use the old downpipes to still have downpipes fitted and he would just remove this, push it away, render, keep thing, keep it away from the wall so that the render could dry uh, and then we put it all back again. So it was quite an ordeal to deal with downpipes and the render so that everything still drained into stormwater if there was any rain. But luckily we didn't have much rain during the whole rendering process so that was a blessing. Um, this is just a close-up on the scratch render. So now that Mark starts applying the um, first coat of render, he goes with this, looks like the biggest afro comb you've seen in your life and you'll see the footage on it, one of my favorite tools on site, and literally just goes along and does a scratch render, a scratch coat that he calls, um, so that when he applies the next coat of render, um, it adheres a lot better because it's got these little scratch marks and indentations to adhere to. I just thought that was interesting, um, the way that was done. So that's what that is. And you can see the scratch render. So now he's applied the lime render on top of the cement render. You can see the cement render down the bottom and he's applying um, the first coats of, of lime render over the top. Um, we try to go color that was as natural and sort of white stony sort of looking as possible. Um, and he's applying that scratch render. You can see the waves, the fine waves before he applies the next coat um, of, of the render. The next photograph just shows how all the windows are protected. So obviously you've got to protect windows so you don't have render everywhere. Here on the near left hand side of the photograph, you can see that the, there's the Hessian that has been applied and then the coat has gone, another coat is, of lime render has gone over that. So the, you can put fiberglass um, can be applied, but we've used Hessian from a sustainability point of view. And that's just so that everything grabs a lot better um, and, and to avoid cracking uh, of any kind. So it's, as you can see, quite a process when it comes to rendering. So that's basically everything I wanted to talk through, just through the, the photographs. But now you can sit back and just watch the multiple pieces of footage stage by stage as we show you how we put the mix together, uh, which you'll see I go on about. It, it looks a lot like gelato, uh, beautiful lime mix and the products we used and showing Mark applying it and scratch coating it and applying the next coat and um, basically all of the different stages and then applying just to give us a rustic look with with the, the back and he does this backhand strokes and, and, and uses his artistic license if you like um, and he creates this look that's not a completely clean rendered look like most properties will have. I prefer to have a much more rustic uh, finish and he does that by literally applying it and then making some markings and going back over it uh, just to give it some character and some texture rather than being a completely smooth, polished finish, which is not what we were after. Um, so yes, we'll show him doing that. Um, and this was how we rendered the house um, to create something that pulls carbon into it all the time. That's what lime does. Carbon dioxide is, is pulled into the lime to make it turn back to limestone so that this render on the house becomes stronger and stronger and stronger over time and we're sequestering carbon all of the time. So um, CO2 is absorbed over a very long period of time um, as the lime render turns back to limestone. So that's that. Uh, enjoy the footage that comes after this and hopefully you will see every stage of how this was applied and why. Okay, so we're here with Mark, Mark Simmons from the Asian Plaster Company. Um, Mark, we have been, I have personally been digging all around the house to basically get right down to below the concrete level. 
the yep. concrete slab yep. so that you can put this cement render and seal it all up down the bottom here. Yep. You've been going for a week nearly on doing preparation work. I've been unbelievably amazed at how much prep's required. I don't often see it done. What is this over here and why is this here dividing these two areas? This is a stop beat. Now we put a stop beat on around the floor level, the yep. damp course level, yep. to um, stop any moisture transferring above damp course. Okay. It's called, if, if you render directly over your damp course, yep. it's called bridging. What can happen is called bridging. So okay. the, the, the moisture can bridge the damp and then uh, start having problems in the yep. rest of your walls. Yep. Whereas if you did ever have any damp problems, hopefully it's we've done enough for it to stay okay. below the so this is mainly due to damp issues, trying to be precautionary yeah. in terms yeah. of damp, not allowing that bridge for the damp to come up past the moisture membrane and up onto all of this. That's backwards. correct, yeah. Okay. So here you've put in these corners as well. So this is, is this standard in terms of So this? <coughs> it, normally we wouldn't really use on the cement area here yeah. we wouldn't use these corners with the mesh wings yeah now we've we're, we're using these on the rest of the building because of the foam reveals okay um so it was just a instead of supplying two different two different right. things but but okay. this is basically to strengthen up the corner okay um yeah give you a nice straight line yeah and then we're going to go with a, a line based render up the top here because we're yeah. doing cement here and lime based here is that because the cement render will seal a lot better? Yeah, so <clears throat> it's a lot harder yep. than a Portland cement and lime. Um, also, we can add a what a liquid waterproof additive to the cement render. Okay. So that gives us a secondary barrier as well right. as cement rather than lime being harder. Yeah, and then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put some paint here because I didn't realize that basically you might have some of this showing and this is obviously going to be darker and different to yes. above here. So we'll match what we've used on the gutter just in terms of color only. And then we're going to here where we have this membrane, the bottom of the, the slab, we're going to try and tape plastic to here and basically try and bring that down over there to give another added protection yeah and then slope everything away from the house so that's yeah. why we've gone all the way around and got all these different barriers i saw you made up your own render here is there a reason why you made your own and didn't just buy the packeted stuff uh, um so make your own because one you can make it slightly stronger okay. being below damp but when you get a bag to render it's it is what it is right um but we want a slightly stronger render being below damp, damp course. Yeah. Um, also, we can add a waterproof membrane, uh, waterproof additive to uh, it. Okay. Um, and it's just nicer to use for, for me anyway. Yeah, you Not, enjoy using yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. All right, Mark. So now we have come across a door. Yep. Um, and what's going to happen here is we've got a little bit of decking here, almost as decorative, so we can step out from the door, and then we're going down onto grass. So this isn't where the deck is going to be, but we are going to have a little bit of deck here. Now, see with this step in the slab here, you've gone over and rendered everything to protect the whole slab? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it hasn't got to look, really look too pretty. Yep. But yeah, just serve a purpose. The red seal because this is actually and this is important that this is actually our west and we get a lot of our weather from the west especially the southwest which is from this area so this will get a lot of water and a lot of rain very important to know where most of your weather is coming from so this will all be sloped away from the building and again we will protect it with another plastic membrane and again we're going to paint it and there's a waterproof membrane in the render so which really, hopefully, successfully keeping the water away from the building. And in this glazing, you can see here, we have these styrene reveals, um, and it's all been taped up, which we've shown a lot. Um, so with these styrene reveals, the reason why they're in is that these are European windows and they just don't fit. 
um, into the same space and this is a, a renovation, a retrofit if you will. So there are these little problems that you have to deal with. You wouldn't need this if you were designing from the beginning. Um, they're not done for specific insulation or anything like that, just to take up space, but they will insulate the gap between the wall and the door um, as an extra bonus. So in terms of, again, we're protecting the corners, but when it comes to rendering, I see you can, you can just render straight over the styrene, Mark. I mean, <clears throat> with this cement render, it's not ideal. Okay. Um, but being below damp, yep. it's it's fine. It's got the mesh corners, the yep. mesh in the corners to strengthen it. Yep. Um, but cement render is not as flexible or not really flexible at all in comparison to the lime render that we've got going above. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so not ideal, but for these little bits and pieces, it, it's going to be fine. be fine, yeah. And that flexibility is a, is a big thing. The reason why we're using the graphen, the graphen stone with the graphene is that it's incredibly flexible and we don't want to use... It. When you use a cement render and it is flexible, is that, um, is that an acrylic or some type of plastic that makes it flexible uh, or polymer of some so sort? So yeah, yeah so you, you do have polymer renders. Um, they're pretty flexible. You can render over polystyrene. Yep. Um, but they still have to be finished with an acrylic art, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, I think you still have to finish with an acrylic, which is, yeah, a paint. Yeah. Trail, trail on paint. Yeah, and a plastic, yeah. which decreases significantly the permeability and arguably is it permeable uh, to what degree. So that's why we're using a natural lime render um, that uses graphene for the flexibility. So still very flexible, helping with, uh, the, with any cracking issues. Um, but that we will show as the next, the next stage as we go above the speed. Um, and then I've noticed, Mark, just on the on these expansion joints, often where we've done some new brickwork, you've put these metal meshes or grids. Um, what's that for? So that's this. This mesh is EML, expanded metal love. Expanded metal love. Yeah. Yep. So basically, it's it's tying the because we've got a straight join here. Yep. That's not an expansion. It's just new brickwork tied uh, into the old. Yep. Um, because there's a straight join there, that's that's a weak point. Okay. So we're trying to tie it all together to prevent any cracking in the future down, okay. down in this area. So not expansion joints, just any weak points any weak like points. that, yeah. you want to reinforce that. Yeah. If you don't, what might happen? It could end up cracking. Okay. Could end up with a hairline crack or, or something, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So it's a lot of prep between all the beading and all of this yeah. reinforcing and meshes. And it's a, it's a lot of work before you even get to render. Yeah, the, the prep is probably a good half the job. Half the I, job. I would say, but maybe not quite, but close to. Um, yeah, as long as your prep's done right, then the rendering's pretty uh, pretty plain sailing and, and you're also, you know, can sleep easier at night. Yeah, you yeah, know. no, absolutely. Awesome. It's called a something like a, a giraffe or something. No, it doesn't matter. No. Um, right, so I've just watched Mark go around with one of these. Um, this you've used to scratch this render back. You've just placed some scratches in there. Yep. You've done this, you said, just after it's gone a bit firm. What, so what's this for? Basically, these lines now yep. will give a key for our next and okay. final coat of render. Okay. The one that will make nice and flat and smooth. And, and smooth it out. Okay, yep. so two coats of that. Yep. And talking about the render, I'm a big cook and I love making bread and dough. I would equate this to dough. I'd imagine you would know what is a good mix. Yeah, um, I mean, this, this mix is probably a bit firm. Yeah. Um, just because we've got some big holes in the 
in the brickwork and the slab to fill up. So it's quite firm to use for rendering. You wouldn't want to be using it all day because it just make you too sore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a good good enough mix to do to to fill some big big voids in and stuff. Um, it's with three sand, one cement. Three sand, one, one cement. cement. Yep, by weight. Um, and some waterproof? Some waterproof additive okay. into the water. Yep. Um, now the, the final coat won't be as strong as this. Okay. We try and make this nice and strong. Okay. Um, not as nice to use, but... When you say not as strong, what does that mean? Uh, not as much cement okay. in the final coat as... Cut as back the on the cement. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's more sandy. More sandy, okay. yeah. Yeah, and probably add a bit of lime into the mix for a bit of... Uh, plasticizer. Okay. So plasticize the mix. And make it, yeah, plastic's a horrible word to us. <laughs> <laughs> basically make it what, a bit more flexy uh, or flexible? Yeah, more flexible. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. Yeah, it, it makes it more flexible, more workable, easier to finish. Right, okay. Yeah. So now you'll put the, yeah, the money shot, so to speak. This is, this is going to be the nice, smooth render, yeah. which will then paint because some of it will be exposed. Yes. Um, yeah. And will match it. And then that's the bottom done. That's How bottom long done. does it take to dry? Cement, it, it takes 28 days to cure. Okay. Yeah. So, so when can we paint onto it? You really shouldn't paint for 28 days. 28 days? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you go by the book, then it's, you shouldn't paint cement render for 28 days. Okay. Yeah. And, and in terms of putting the plastic sort of just coming off it, yeah. taping onto it, yeah, that be okay. Just the line fine, of yeah. tape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that won't, won't matter. Okay. As long as you keep it, let the air get to it for at least a week. Yep. Um, yeah. After a week, you'd be good to. And what if it stuff. rains a lot on it? Is it? It doesn't be matter. Fine. No, no, no. Okay. It'll dry out. It'll dry out. Okay. Yeah. So from a painting point of view, maybe that'll matter. But in terms of the actual cement render, not an issue. Not, not an issue. No. Okay. No. Perfect. No. Okay, so what we've done here, uh, this is a nice picture so you can see all of the different stages. We've now finished the plinth, so ground level and below is sealed with cement render. Now we're busy with the nice lime render where there is no cement in the mix. Just graphene and lime um, for maximum flexibility. So we've put an initial coat on. We've then put hessian. Um, Fiberglass can sometimes be used, and we've chosen to put hessian here, just from an environmental point of view. Um, we've put one coat of the render on, and we've put a second coat of the render on. Well, we put a first coat on, then we put the hessian on, then we put a second coat. And now Mark has also gone along and done the scratching, so now when this is dry, it'll be ready for our top coat and the colour. It'll be in the top coat and then the sealant on top of that. So that's the different stages and where we're at, so you can see what it looks like. So we always, before we start anything, Mark always, we've pressure hosed the bricks beforehand and let it louder to dry. But before we start any first coat, it's always making sure it's as clean as possible and as debris free as possible. So a little bit of that water. Then we'll bring the mix over, which I've always equated to, it looks like gelato. A really good gelato, this mix. Uh, obviously, that's the perfect mix. Um, you'll see it as we scoop it up. Reminds me of the gelato shops. Uh, we'll see the first coat go on, and then we'll show some footage of uh, the hessian going on, and then the second coat going on. And then we'll have the nice third coat, well, third and fourth coat together with the colour. All right.
Onyx, so here we've got the Hessian. Put on the first coat. And now we're going with the Hessian down. That's it. So we want to go How far up, go as up as high as we can. Okay. So we want to be somewhere, we stick at the bottom first. So you want to go to you, towards the bead. Keep going to you. Keep going to you, around there. Yep. And then we just stick it from the bottom. So Mark, we were saying that you were saying that we wouldn't always put this Hessian or fiberglass onto brickwork. No. That this is more precautionary in terms of cracking. Yes. That we're doing this. Okay. Where would you essentially need to put this type of thing on? Um, to grab. Any any uh change in material okay. uh, so from for our, I was going to say polystyrene to brickwork or, or like what you've got above your windows yeah the concept the gutex yeah, yeah. yeah. okay um, anything like that is the main concerns okay well, we put it everywhere because cracking is we want to do anything and everything we can to avoid any cracking so we've got a lime render which is a lot more flexible yes we've got the graphene in the render because it's from graphene stone graphene which makes it highly flexible yep and we're using this material um, and you mentioned that in traditional render uh, well normal cement render there might only be one coat how many mils or possibly two coats but how many mils in terms of render would you end up on if you just had a, a standard cement render standard cement render maybe four mil four mil four mil and what will we end up uh, with here between these two coats the, this coat hessian the second coat two coats the top eight coat to ten. Eight, eight to, to ten, ten mil yeah okay yeah so it's quite a big difference yes all right so a lot more render yeah and what's the advantage of having eight mil over four mil um is there an advantage? There's an advantage because sometimes if the render's too thin, over time, once it gets a lot of weather, you can see the bricks grinning back through. Right, okay, I've seen yeah. that sometimes. You start yeah. seeing lines that's and so right. on. Okay. Um, yeah, so that, that's, that's the main reason. Okay, awesome. That's the main reason. Mm. So this is the, the comb, um, because it looks a lot like an afro comb. And this is what is used to make these lines, and we show Mark going through, combing it or scratching it. Um, Mark calls it the scratch render, the scratch coat. Um, so that's all scratched. These scratches, is that to just help the top coat grab? Yeah, or? Okay. yeah it's used as a key, basically. Okay, all right. Yeah, it is a nice, a nice looking broad gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would take care of any large gap though, that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then scratch through. Now you're going through on the second coat over the Hessian. Yep. How long do we need to wait to let the, I'm obviously it's weather dependent, but yep. how quickly does this dry before we can put any top, final top, couple of top coats on? Oh, uh, I mean, you could go on the next day. Yeah. Um, but the longer you can leave it, the better it can cure. Okay. Um, I mean, if, if you can leave it four days, that would be the, the ideal. Best. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's so weather dependent. Yeah. Because we're sitting here praying it doesn't rain. We've got sun here, but there's cloud and there's all sorts of little bits of rain that are predicted. But yep. you said the scratch coat, not too serious if it gets a little bit of no, water no, no. on it. No. The uh, scratch coat can get, get water on it. But when we come to put the top coat on here, and particularly then the sealant, the vapor permeable breathable sealant on top, we don't want any rain. That needs to completely dry for those two yes. you mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Right. right, so here we are at the top coat stage. Um, so we've put on the undercoat, we're now putting on the top coat. It's been done nice and smooth. And now we're going to put in the, the sort of texture. So how do we how do you put in that beautiful artistic texture of yours Mike? Um, use the back of a trowel, the back of a spatula, any 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 of the tools that we use really you okay. know uh, even down to this uh, the sponge float here yeah we can even give the, give it a different texture with this 
So mm. we've got vari variation of texture. Yep. And um, okay. Yeah. Yep. So we can get some finer texture and then some rougher texture as we pull the back edge of our trowel across the walls. Yeah, beautiful. And that just gives it that look so it's not polished, clean, like most renders that we see, which is nothing wrong with that. It's just that oh, I love seeing this bit of character and bit of texture in render. So this is what we're doing here. Um, and I see we've spent, you spent a lot of time on the reveals, um, getting the sill to basically fall away so that the water can fall away and yep. getting these really square especially since we had to put in some styrene in build up because the windows are european windows going to this fitting we've had to sort of make it yeah. fit and you've had to then try and you do quite a bit of work by the looks of it to get it all square yeah so how we how we do this is um measure back from the edge of the window we take a rough guide on what we've got on each window and take an average yep measure back and put a small line in various places on the window. Yep. Then we run a piece of blue tape down that line, Okay. parallel with that line. And then we use a square to square our bead off of the back of the line. Back of the line, yep. So we know we're gonna be within a, a few millimeters, you know, two or three millimeters square. Yep, and that's just what you've peeled back. Now yeah, I've just peeled that back. <clears throat> so we, we, while it's still damp, the render's still damp, we peel it back. Yep. And then that way we can get a nice tight edge up against the window and make sure that there's no mess on the, yep. on the windows or it's anything It's beautiful like and square. Um, and I see here comes the sun. We're chasing the sun. I didn't realise in rendering <laughs> this type of lime render. In this render we have lime, we have sand and we have graphene and that's it. So no cement, no acrylics, nothing like that. So it's not as bulletproof as in terms of when you're applying it. You've got to be a lot more careful. So that sun, Mark, you tend to do facades. When you come in the morning, in the afternoon, you plan it out. Yeah. In terms of not working in the direct sunlight, but it doesn't need, it doesn't want a lot of rain, doesn't want a lot of wind, really overcast. Yeah, that's With right. no rain is your best. That's right. Yesterday was perfect. Yep. Um, for, for the areas that we, we applied because it was a nice cloudy day, no wind, no rain, no sun. Yep. So it was perfect. Today's not quite so perfect, but you do have to do this at some time. Like yep. You can't wait for weeks and weeks. So we've done it in the morning. We we'll keep it wet as much as we can throughout the day yep. and let it dry slowly. But okay. yeah, ideally we, we've applied this while it's been cloudy. It's still fairly cloudy. so. It yeah. should be good. So we'll so, get patches of sun yeah, and cloud. Yeah. Okay. So we, we like it to dry slowly, not dry out too fast because we can get cracking and etc. Yeah. etc. Et but yeah. and we've been lucky because you're saying this top coat and the sealant really shouldn't get any rain on it <laughs> no. at all. And we're in Victoria. This is now where are we middle of May. Uh, middle of autumn coming into winter. This is our rainy season. We've had rain. Um, we've now ha going to get seven not, not rainy days in a row. So seven days of no rain, which is some kind of blessing. We, we were very blessed. Touch wood, it doesn't yeah. happen. All right. All right, Mark. So here, we're just going to show what we're mixing up, what makes up our render. Um, in these buckets, we've got your Calgraphin, it's called. Calgraphin Premium. There's a murkiness in here and there's liquid. What's in the bucket exactly? So the, the contents is lime and graphene. Okay. Slate lime and graphene. Um, the murkiness, that's the tint that they've dispersed into the cow graphene okay. to give us the color that we use yep. after on the, on the yep. So they tint it, there's water, lime, graphene, and the tint. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And so the, you the just water has only come out of the lime when it's been slaked, so it's not been uh, added. Okay. So that's that's literally from the slaking of the lime. Okay. So you just gotta mix that up because it's solid down the bottom. Yeah. And the water's come out. So we're just mixing it into a slurry, which is what you've done on these. Yeah, that's it. So mate basically uh, stirring the tint through the lime so yep. we get a consistent mix when we put it into the mixer. Okay. Now we can do these separately, just yeah. in a bucket, but on scale like this, it takes a lot longer, so yeah. we can fit five or six 
units of each into a mixer. All going into the mixer. So, yeah. And then with these bags, this is going to go into the mixer. Yep. This is going to go into the mixer. Yes. Anything else? No. That's it. That's it. And what's in the bag here? We've got graphene stone mortar fine. Mortar says. fine. So that's it's a fine sand basically. Okay. Um, they they have four different grades. So yep. one is a nature blue, is what we use as a scratch coat. Yep. Um, that's got um, something to make it here. Yeah. So the to the brickwork or low suction or high suction backgrounds. Then we have a mortar base, which yep. is for high builds. Yep. We have a fine and a super fine. But for our texture, we use a fine. Mortar fine. So basically, we're using sand. Filtered sand, yeah. Filtered sand, so yeah. it's very, very fine. Filtered sand, lime, graphene, and that little bit of tin. Yeah. And this all gets mixed up together. Yes. Perfect. Alright Mark, so now it's all churned up, basically I call this the gelato maker, I think yep. it looks like gelato, <laughs> that's the consistency, yep. so you put it all in a bucket, you take it there and you start troweling it on. Yep. So just to reiterate, here all we have is sand and lime and graphene and water, basically, Yeah. Um, and a bit of a tint, there's no acrylic, there's no cement, no. there is none of this rubbish, it's completely natural. Yes. And for me the biggest advantage because someone asked across the road what's what's the advantage of going for lime yep. yeah it's natural yes it, it's breathable yeah but for me correct me if i'm wrong basically because it's absorbing carbon dioxide all yep. the time it's tr almost going back to limestone yeah and in essence we'll be getting harder and harder um, which will last longer and longer so instead of your render and outside of the house deteriorating over time it's actually getting stronger over time. It, it does to a certain extent. It also protects the building better because okay. of the breathability. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So whereas Portland cement is it's sealed right in. You you're not you're protecting the building. Yep. But a lot of the time the cement render is getting harder than the actual building itself. Okay. When that shouldn't be the case. The building should be the the hardest part of your yeah right of your build. okay yeah. but the one thing we do have to do uh, where have I got something here yeah. so I'm going to I've basically that's been my job to go around with hydroxyl also yeah. from graphene stone um, which again we mix 50 to 50 with water yeah and it's a white liquidy water um, show here so this is what you end up with um, this is just it looks like water like milk basically um, so it's not like a bitumen rubber uh, anything like that it's a completely natural sealant and that we're putting two to three coats on yeah. um, in between and that still allows the building to breathe correct but it's going to how in what way do we have to put that on and protect it because it's lime Basically, it fills all the micro pores of the lime, yep. especially with the texture we're creating. Yeah, you've got many, many micro pores. I know because I've been going with a paintbrush yeah. and <laughs> dabbing all in there to get in there. Yeah, yeah, but even smaller than that, that you can't actually see unless it's under a, a microscope. Yeah, um, it's basically sealing that to stop any water, water, which eventually could turn to mold, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So it's still breathable, there's still permeability, which is very important. Yep. We don't want to seal it like acrylic renders. No, that's right. So it's very breathable, but in terms of water, we want to keep that water resistant and repellent yeah. and basically the water still beating off and, exactly. and going away from the building. Exactly. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mark.